Hey guys, one of the cool parts about living in LA is that around Nam time, there's all these cool guitar people that are coming my way. So today I got to sit down with Thomas Blug from Blue Guitar. We actually talked for a long time uh, and it's kind of a lengthy video. So I'm gonna put links and markers about uh, where you could jump to, you know, some of the history we talk about, where he's from, some products, guitars, players, all influences, all that kind of stuff. So I uh, hope you like this. Let's go talk to Thomas. Okay, so I am here with Thomas Blug from, actually, is it the company called Blue Guitar or Blue Guitar? How do you pronounce that? Well, Blue Guitar. Blue Guitar, <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. And how, what a, a, a lucky coincidence yeah. that your name just works so perfectly well, into that. Well, I actually used my name, so people don't get me wrong, like Mr. Black. You know, when when I started as an artist, some people, um, at, you know, at hotels came and, hey, this is your room, Mr. Black, and said, I'm German, my name is Blug, you know? And so to combine guitar and Blug in one blue guitar is like a blue guitar, but sounds good. It's it's like a dr dream come true. You couldn't even, like, plan that better. Oh, yeah. My, I'm, thanks to my father. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> he planned me, maybe. <laughs> so uh, I think a lot of people uh, have seen your products floating yeah. around the internet. Um, you're a very busy guy and visiting a lot of places. Sure. Uh, your primary product is the Amp One. Amp One, yeah. Which is, uh, which is. This is the latest edition, which is the Iridium edition, and you're holding the package of the Mercury edition. So there are currently two. Currently two. Currently two. And it's a self-contained guitar amp, uh, real guitar amp. In that would fit inside this box, yeah, and it uh, actually doesn't weigh much more than the box the itself. Empty, <laughs> yeah, the empty box, is, which is pretty incredible. Two pounds and something—that's the weight of the unit. Uh, wow, that's actually uh, pretty amazing. So you, this is not your first product. You you didn't just show up and create this like intensely technological feat of uh, miracleness. You. Uh, started maybe even before, uh, but you were at Hughes and Kettner. Yeah, for 27 years. Okay, was that your first like big designing? Yeah, home? yeah, yeah. Before, you know, I started uh, being. My first hobby was electronics when I was 11, and I discovered the guitar um, at the age of 13, 14. Okay. And then I kind of you know started acoustic guitar, and then I bought a pickup, and then I bought an electric guitar. And that was the moment I, you know, the guitar was the thing. Okay, so was the gear more of a catalyst to like your guitar passion than a particular player? Um, well, it, both. You know, when I was not playing the guitar, I just, uh, um, well, this, I was listening to music and, and my hobby, electronics, I was building a stereo system. I have some nice pictures of me being a teenager in front of my first home um, self-made stereo system, a copy wow. of Bose speakers and hi-fi. I mean, it wasn't that good, but you know, being a teenager, I was proud. And that's amazing. Yeah, and I was a big fan of the Rolling Stones. Okay. And uh, weird stuff like Kraftwerk from Germany, Autobahn, and Jean-Michel Jarre, French guy with synthesizer yeah. music. You know, um, but the rock guys did it for me, and you know, Deep Purple. And then when I pick up the guitar, the whole thing changed in a way. I got excited about electric guitar, electric Hendrix and Blackmore, and I am still am. You know, it, the, the passion and the, the fire of this early discovery in my life is still the same. And today I play, my, my German band is called Rock Anarchy, uh, and we, we kind of live that spirit of the 60s, 70s, where we go on stage and play 15 minutes one song and the solo is as long as you feel it. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know how you managed to become a, an accomplished guitar player and an accomplished designer and tech head and like... Well, it, it, it's very easy. I haven't done anything else. I went to oh, school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My father was um, at a university, so I knew how it looks at a university from, from my childhood days because I w was doing my homework with in his office kind of and um you know when i i turned after my finished school my father of course was begging uh, my family was begging me to to go and study something and i thought hmm, music and i learned 
at that time in Germany there was classical music and no pop music so I knew this was not the kind of thing that I want to do the, the next option was like electronics and then I was, I was like yeah but uh, what, what about my music at the age of 17 I was already getting studio uh, jobs uh, get high, as a Playing, session player okay. which was scary you know but looking back it's like today people uh, try uh, to get a job and uh, you know I was playing the band somebody told a f another guy that I could play and the next day they said I had a good tone and they hired me in the studio and it's like you know how could that happen well it happened it it, it, it was a natural thing and um, so I was kind of doing my thing all my life and um, you know other people go to university and spend whatever 10 years following that path and mm -hmm. then ending up with that job and then finally uh, and I'm just doing the two things that I love since I'm a teenager that's awesome yeah and so you were totally knee-deep in being a guitar player how do you land like a design job at Hughes and Kettner. Well, this came as a guitar player. They, they needed a, a demonstrator. Ah. And at that time, they had a guy that was a brilliant acoustic guitar player, but didn't do the electric so much. And um, then the other thing was, they needed somebody that could speak English, because this was the early days of Hughes and Kettner when the company, even the boss, didn't speak in a single word of English. Oh wow! And I finished school, and my my kind of master classes were English music and physic. physics like perfect yeah <laughs> that's so, the guy you we know, need and nobody could, could double check if I spoke English or not <laughs> and my English was terrible <laughs> you know I learned it at uh, school yeah um, now it's okay because you know I got practice you know being here yeah but you know at that time I and they sent me in, uh, in, uh, put me on the plane and sent me over to whatever NAMM show and there I was with my very strong German accent this is an amplifier <laughs> made in Germany and this is great <laughs> you know so at that time uh, the first Hughes and Kettner product I was aware of was the red box their, their cabinet simulator there was there was one um, that came before which was the AS64 okay and uh, this was my job to demonstrate it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. The red box was uh, a speaker emulator that was later on designed to kind of go direct. And right. this, this was probably the first proper unit to go direct. Yeah, and that was hugely possible or uh, popular, popular yeah. and uh, it was fairly inexpensive compared to anything else. Yeah, that, that was. Uh, it, it was kind of simple, but it did the job. It was. Uh, I think two or three filters, you know, one was giving the, the bass hump a little bit and then get rid of all the nasty high end and shape the mids a bit. It basically was an EQ, but at that time this was already a big step forward. Yeah, it was so hard to get anything recorded from guitar around that time. Right. And then, uh, especially as a kid, like, oh, I could get that and then I don't have to buy a mic, a mic yeah. free and all this. In one, it's done. Yeah, amazing. So for me, I saw that yeah. you had invented one of the first pedals I ever got, which the, was the Hughes and Kettner Tube Man. Yeah. The original, like, sort of flat black one. And that thing sounded so awesome. I'll give you the story. Okay. That, that's a true story. You know, when we had this uh, AS64 back then, the boss said, yeah, we need something small with a tube in it. And I thought, hmm, I want a pedal that has a tube in it and it, it should have the, the three sounds that I personally need, which is like a clean sound, uh, you know, a crunch tone and a lead tone. And then I made a drawing, I, th I think on the plane coming to a NAMM show, because this was like, hey, we need a small box. And I did the drawing, this was 1992. I still have the, the, the drawing at home with the, the layout. It's like, okay, we need uh, this kind of preamp. We need um, to have, a special output to go in front of a guitar amplifier that has less high end to go into the effects loop to go with the built in red box direct. So I made all this layout, and guess what? The final product was exactly like I did the drawings, except for one thing it had four sounds because the switch had four positions. We needed one more, <laughs> yeah. And we called it jazz, we made a, kind of a, a darker, clean sound. I remember that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and it's still a classic. Yeah, and, and then it, it became, there was a V2 that yeah, got, yeah, got sure. put in new yeah. enclosures and stuff. Yeah. As well as, uh, well, before I jump there, it, did Nuno Betancourt use that? Triumph, on? the Triumph. 
Nuno used to... I, I had heard he used the two man uh, on the Punchline album. Probably that I met Nuno when he was using the Triumph. I didn't know about all this stuff. Maybe he did. Yeah. I mean, you did uh, a ton of products at Hughes and Katner, like right. Rotosphere, and yeah. so, which was all the like pedals, legendary. All the, yeah. oh, you did all of all those. the pedals oh. because you know back in the day, you know, I thought about pedals that nobody else would do, and who did a Leslie speaker emulator in a pedal? No one. No one. At that time, this was 1997, five, or I don't even remember. It's that last century. <laughs> and then the, the Replex, which is the replica of an Echoplex, but a tube version. It's still on my board. I still love the Susan Katner pedal. On my pedal board, my amp now is smaller mm -hmm. than my Echo. <laughs> <laughs> I had the uh, the Rotosphere on my yeah. pedal board. Yeah. My pedal board weighed like 80 pounds. It was so heavy, <laughs> but it sounded incredible. Yeah. I mean, and then yeah. it, the speeds, it was yeah, yeah. really it's, great sound. It, yeah, it's a great product still. For sure. Yeah. So what's interesting to me is like, the when I saw the Tube Man, after kind of going backwards with hindsight, this is like the way future of evolution of that Absolutely. kind of product. Yeah. So, you know, the M1 is like the next step of the tube man. You know, when I've designed the tube man, I already had, a, a, I was hired to play session in the UK. So I had to fly from Germany to the UK. And how much gear could I bring? Not much, mm -hmm. you know, maybe your guitar, maybe a few bags with pedals or whatever. And of course, there were some marshals uh, or something available, but I, I always wanted to have the always with me amp, even back then. Right. So the Tubeman was just the first attempt to that direction. And now, you know, with all the other amps that are designed after that and the experience, the technology was right to go back to the basic idea that I always had, hey, shrink your amp, put it in the gig bag, and your set is kind of complete. Get a, a cabinet or go direct and that's all you need. And this amp is kind of, yeah, this kind of logical progression on that line. You can't have 12 tubes in there, is, but it's a tube amp? It is tube, it's nano tube, it's all analog. Let's put it that way. My reference amp was the triamp that I designed with Jusen Kettner, which has 13 tubes. So how many more do you need? I don't know. Maybe some amplifier has two or three more, but you know, this was all tube and all the flexibility from tubes. And I was gigging with that amp and people pay some money to see me play with my amp, which was for 15 years the Jusen Kettner triamp. So when I designed this amp, I, I knew this is the level that I have to keep up. Anything lower will sacrifice my credibility as an artist it's like right you know i mean i cannot go and say okay sorry guys i, was, I don't i sound like shit now <laughs> yeah because it's for you it's yeah. not just like this other guy no 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 this it's, is for me yeah so but i knew with all the knowledge that i was gaining in over the years it's possible and of course the amp as we see it here is like the final version and there were pre-versions you know one you can see on my live DVD when uh, Blue plays Hendrix, there was a big, like this size, plastic box sitting on top of my Marshall, which was the vintage channel of this M1 already. And this is on the record too. Oh, really? Yeah, besides the Marshall. So hmm, there's the good tone coming from both. Interesting. So, yeah. so you, you were just using that as a separate head, yeah. basically? Yeah. And no one, no, no one knew no, that no it one basically knew. is a pedal head, yeah, yeah, you know, pedal amp. Yeah, yeah. And but this was already the first time. And then I did a few gigs, you know, where people didn't know me, like in Belgium. So I had my my big Houston Kettner amp, and just behind it, I, I had prototypes of this hidden, and then, and I was playing it, and nobody noticed, you know, because. The amp was looking like it was, you know, shiny blue and uh, right. yeah, nobody could notice. And then there was one gig, particular gig, just before the first uh, trade show where I was showing the blue guitar amp one. I tried to see if the audience will notice because there was my triumph, and on the encore I was switching it off, and people go, 
most people didn't notice because ordinary people listen to the music, but guitar players, what's this? <laughs> and oh, you, you switch off your amp, yeah. the triamp in the back, yeah. Cause yeah. It, and it also has all these blue lights, so yeah. you know when it that's It was off. black, it was black, you know, <laughs> and I was still playing. And there was something on my pedal board in, in a black cloth kind of thing. I told people, oh, it's my new overdrive, whatever. Nobody could see what it was, mm -hmm. you know, but I switched off the amp. And then a few faces went, ooh, what, what was this? Boom, close my pedal board and say, see you next show. Yeah, well, we talked about that bias when you see like a beautifully uh, ah, yeah. tolexed head yeah. That's this big and it and makes you, go, you play and you feel like yeah. Hey, you it expect it to sound yeah. like something, and when something's this big, you expect it to sound yeah. this big. Yeah. Uh, so th this de certainly de defies that. Is there? I see three buttons. Is it three channels, or is this you get one channel? Um, well, it's actually four channels. So there's a clean channel, there's a vintage channel, a classic, and a modern channel. Okay. Um, now there's three foot switches. Um, you can use those in several different ways. This is the standard way of like what I would call the, the uh, two channel mode is clean and overdrive and you dial in which overdrive channel you like. And then, you know, it's, you know, clean or modern or clean or classic and the boost and the reverb. Really, it's set up so straightforward. I feel like I could just dive in. Yeah. There, there's no real like Brainiac stuff from that front panel. Well, Although on the side there I see a lot of little tiny yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, Brainiac the, things. You know, the, this is what I call the custom controls where you can tweak the sounds. Okay. But the concept is, um, you know, the, the, every guitar player likes to tweak. So, you know, you can find your tone on the side and then forget about it because I'm a player and as a player I don't want to get distracted from too many knobs. You know, gotcha, yeah. and um, you know, talking about how to to get to four sounds, this is only one way. The second way is, I can program the three or memorize settings into the three foot switches. So that this could be like my clean channel with reverb and boost. The next one could be my my vintage channel with no reverb and no boost for AC/DC, and then I have whatever a classic channel with boost and reverb for my lead tones. So this could be a, a three-channel amp. Cool. Or you have an external foot switch, which would give you the functionality of uh, clean overdrive and boost. And then you could program the three overdrive channels into the three internal channels and use the external foot switch to go to the clean channel and have the boost. Cool. So, or you have the MIDI adapter. You know, I thought of so many different uh, things, but without distracting you. So if you want to go MIDI, you have to buy this MIDI adapter. Okay. And the guy who's a blues player who hates MIDI because <laughs> MIDI is not his... Yeah. yeah. He, he doesn't see this MIDI. You know, it's just a, a tiny little thing on the back MIDI adapter in here. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah. yeah, and it's just a, an amp where yeah. you have yeah. gain, master, three EQs and a reverb. It's just yeah. super simple. Yeah. Uh, let's plug in and maybe you could run me through a couple tones. Sure. I have a little 112 cabinet back here. So maybe that's what you're hearing. Or there's a 412 <laughs> that's mic'd up. Uh, either way, this is the amp. Okay. So it, it's a. Let's, uh, let's start on clean. And how many watts is it? It's 100 watts. It's actually a bit more, but I rate it at 100 watts because, you know, I don't want to argue about if it's 110 or 130. Uh, I call it 100, and it's loud. People get a little scared, I've found, mm -hmm. anything above 100 watts, they get scared for their speakers. Like, I've had people ask me about uh, a 112, there's like, mm -hmm. you can't plug a 100 watt head into a 112, and I'm like, I do that all day long. Yeah, I do that too, but I do understand those people too, because, um, well, maybe they had made a bad experience if they, sure. that, that they killed the speaker. Mm -hmm. I've done it on purpose, so I know it can do it. <laughs> okay. And therefore, I have a half power mode. So when you press and hold the first button while switching it on, it has 50 watts only. Oh, cool. But I still play it on 100, and I'm not using the master on 10. I use it master on 6, sometimes 7. Okay. And it's totally safe with at least my cabinets or with, you know, vintage 30s. They are officially rated 60 watts. Um, you know, 60 watts means it's 60 watt continuous power. And peaks they can handle. So speaker 
is killed when mostly in 99% by temperature, which means there's a constant level of whatever, how many watts, uh, you, and this will heat up the coil and this will burn oh. the, the voice coil. It's, I would have figured it was like a kajink and that no that no, uh, no, movement no. in the no no that that's pretty safe actually oh it's it is a constant uh, too high voltage that that kind of uh, burns the coil oh okay when the heat is getting too high um, so 100 watts yeah. uh, solid state power nanotube power okay so here's the thing what I learned from the beautiful tube amps is the power amp section is what makes us guitar players feel a tube amp even more than the preamp. I'm not ta talking that the preamp is not important. No, the preamp is also important. But we all have played transistor pedals. So the guitar goes into a transistor pedal and that alone plugged into a mixing console sounds shit. But that plugged into a guitar amp sounds good because of the preamp and mainly because of the power amp. Hmm. So I knew from all my decades in finding uh, or designing guitar amps that the power amp is the key and the foundation for, for a good tone. And therefore, by the way, the black uh, version here, the Iridium for metal, has a different version of power amp compared to the silver one. Ah. Because metal players have a different chuck chuck and it's not only just a bit more gain here and there. It, that's, that's the beauty of a metal amp versus the beauty of a traditional amp. And like the, it's that, that response and the, yeah. the sag and the way it the sag, kind of blooms. Yeah, it, it's blooming, it's sagging. It's um, the interaction of the power amp with the speaker. It's the so-called current feedback. And that's kind of specially filtered with metal amps. And you can do all this kind of tight punchy low end with that power amp function mm -hmm. if you try to get the same thing from a preamp it doesn't feel the same it, mm -hmm. it's probably the same frequency response but it's not the feel you know and so my tube works in the power amp section together with some analog stuff it's all combined mix of everything i've learned over decades okay so it's not you know people look it's a tube it must be all tube no that that's not true but it's using the tube at the right place where the tube does a brilliant job for the unit well it, it kind of makes sense to me because there's been some I, i'm a preamp connoisseur mm -hmm. there's been some great preamps that are largely solid state like the ada mp1 yeah. it has i think two tubes in it but there's a solid state section that sounds really good absolutely um there was old marshall uh, yeah, rack preamp that had one yeah. i think just one tube and it's a cattle follower which means it 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 adds the the gain is made in in diodes and transistors, and it gets a little tubey feel from the cathode follower. That's the the circuit called, which is in every good guitar amp, by the way. Okay. In all classic, you know, Marshalls and Fenders and blah blah blah. It's a standard pattern amp, which kind of gives you the, another point, which I feel is important for guitar playing, which which makes the notes not fizzy. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. that's the the, yeah. the and, bane of our existence, is yeah. fizziness. Yeah, and by the way, do you know that the MP Marshall preamp is the, the preamp that is used by Billy Gibbons? Yes, I did know that. Yeah, and, and you know, most of the time you think, hey, this guy has a swampy, whatever, 59 bassman or something, and you know what he's playing? He's a, got a rack. <laughs> a rack, you yeah. know, a transistor overdrive into some tube stuff, and it sounds killer. Yeah. You know? So... You know, beware of pre-consumptions like, eh, this is not working, you know. And of course, I learned stuff that is new to the industry. I'm, I teamed up with a Russian engineer that is killer. And now I have another guy. Uh, I love engineers. <laughs> and and we we are so passionate about, you know, that, that, that thing. And that's, yeah, that drives us to, to get all the details from the from the tube world into the new package. That is super cool. Mm -hmm. All right, let's hear something. Yeah. Uh, so we're on uh, like clean. A, a, a clean. Clean. And 
that's just <laughs> like five across the board. Sounds great. Yeah, it's the uh, the EQ is on five. Uh, well, uh, the reverb is on five. Um, I put the boost on minimum, but in the the boost I can switch it off just to see what's different. <laughs> Clarity, yeah. a little snappier. With, with the Les Paul, I prefer the boost on uh, or less gain, mm -hmm. but I like it also when it breaks up just a little bit. So I thought it's a nice starting point. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Is the reverb uh, a digital reverb in there? Sure, yeah. It sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I have a weird No rattling. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That sounds fantastic. Um, how, if you just gain the crud yeah, yeah, out of yeah, that, yeah. where does that go? Okay, I give you a little bit more boost. Okay, so we're going. <laughs> is the boost essentially sort of like having a boost pedal? A in boost, the yeah, yeah. Okay, so that just thinking wise, what it, what are that's coming from? <laughs> even the volume of the... That's nice. That's it's, a clean channel. I like it. Yeah, it's a clean channel on, chen, uh, on 10 a boost. It's just like a cranked Fender amp with, you know... That's awesome. That sounds really good. Yeah, so this shows how the, the, the clean kind of continuously blends into overdrive. You know, it's not like, oh, there's only one sweet spot that the guy could nail with a nice frequency range. No, the dynamics is there. You know, it's, it's kind of, if this is what a tube amp does. If, if you turn the volume on this amp, it's like if you turn the volume on the old school Fender amp, you know? It starts from sp sparkling clean when the bright switch is on, and then it's getting meatier, meatier, and then it starts to break up nicely and gets a bit of compression, and this is what we have here. Yeah. So I see, I have a question though. You yeah. have two masters. What's it, happening? Well, this master is for the overdrive channels. So ah. when, when I switch to the overdrive channel... Wait, so right now in this the, uh, clean, yeah. Those two knobs again in the master are not active. Not active. Ah, that's why you went to the volume. Yeah, volume is clean volume. Okay. Oh, and that's nice too, because now the opposite, where before we were using the boost to get a little more yeah. uh, attack and punch and sparkle, yeah. and that just let the overdrive kind of sink a little deeper yeah, sure, and heavier. Sure, sure. Is... And you still have the boost now, like... Yeah. High five. Okay. <laughs> that's that's really nice. Yeah, and it's, really nice. this is just a clean channel. But you know, the good thing is you find tones that you feel good with. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah, there's my you know darker. It's there. It's there. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. all right. There's uh, three more channels. In I, there. Gi I give you the classic. Uh, no, sorry, we start with the vintage. Um, try this. Um, low setting. <laughs> really low like this it's, it's kind of cleanish <laughs> a little bit more. Now, so this is your basic tone, and then go and have the boost. Of the <laughs> 
channels are there specific amps you were looking at or are they collections of amps or you're, you merged for a kind of yeah I have both uh, you know I have my own amp collection and I have reference points you know there's amps that work for me fine on stage in the studio and uh, I'm a big Marshall fan when you watch my videos yeah I saw you have <laughs> and, a nice collection of Marshall and, and it's not all of them I have more upstairs oh. it's it's I'm selling a few uh, I have too many because <laughs> um, because you know, being a sound designer it was always a good excuse. Oh, I, how much is it? And I bought it. And um, but some of the amps are reference points, so I do A B comparisons. Um, but in the end, it's like it is what it is because um, I use that to a certain point, and then I become free. It's like okay, yeah. I reach that level, and then you know, I play myself. I, I grab a few different guitars. And then I, I know the circuitry and I can smell there's some extra I can get here and uh, if I like it uh, I go for it All right this is cool because those two channels are uh, obviously married in uh, they're close to each other in the gain range right it feels like but I'm, I'm only oh. on four by now no. oh okay. okay so if you play and I go on and show you how it's <laughs> So that, that goes same, from yeah. man, they go from like super vintage to yeah. like there's a long journey yeah. in gain on it. And I notice you still haven't touched the tone knobs at no. all. Why? It just is like good. <laughs> sounds, sounds, sounds okay for me. Yeah. <laughs> Just to hear it, what it does, if you play, I, I change the treble. Okay. That's great. Yeah. They kind of do what you think they would do. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right, let's go on to the the next the uh, classic. Okay, here's the classic, and the classic has its own voicing on the custom control section. Okay, I start with the tone. This is counterclockwise. Okay. Can you turn the reverb off oh, for sure. me? For and is there less gain available on this channel? Sure. Yeah. I like that in all of the channels there's this like crack on the note. You get that immediacy. Yeah. It's so like visceral. Yeah. I like that a lot. So well, actually, how low does the gain go for this channel? <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so get, you go from like Crunch, zero all yeah, the way yeah, up, yeah, yeah. and then you could adjust yeah. the tape. By the way, there is a mode that you can program the top amount of gain for each channel. So, uh, like you, a limit to the how much gain? Yeah, I mean, imagine now I'm turning the, the gain up all the time because I like this on 10 and this on blah, blah, blah. So, how to make the the vintage channel the perfect channel for you? Um, and then when you switch to the next channel to get the perfect amount of gain for that channel, you can kind of dial this in and, and memorize it with the channel. That's pretty cool. Yeah. There's some options. Yeah, yeah. Before people go, oh, how do we use it? It's only one option. There are many options. 
but you know now we are talking tones and I show you tones okay and so you said that's at the low the min, most minimum on the side what yeah. was that no. That's that's the, the tone control of that channel. Oh, okay. So, so there's so, a so uh, the master tone. Yeah. Is that like a presence or? L listen. So simply play one riff okay. and. Okay. Now it's scooped, it's scooped out it's scooped. a bit. Yeah. So I, nice. Yeah. Can you turn it like 10, 15 percent? Yeah. That sounds great. It's chewy and juicy. Yeah. Now more gain. Okay, well, we have more gain on the same channel. Oh, jeez. Harmonics just jump out. <laughs> Thank you. And it's then we're making have... my heart happy of, <laughs> with gain. Gain happy. Um, so this is modern. And now the tone control, maybe while you. like a mellower uh, uh, setting for lead tones and the other one can uh, yeah has more bite you know do you think uh, that regionally or country specific there's a character to amps I mean there's been amazing an Amer amazing heritage of German amps yeah uh, British amps and American, American amps, amps yeah um, and others but yeah, yeah. like do you think there's a, a German characteristic at all? That's, I mean, you're so influenced by the British. Sure, that's my problem. You know, that, and that's specifically hard to tell you being a German about my German influence. Let's put it that way. You know, the way I see the world and I see the ends that I learned to know in my life. You know, when, when I grew up, there were no German ends besides ends that were that bad that we never looked at them. Hmm. So we looked, the first amps that we looked at were British amps. And this goes back to like Marshalls because they were available, um, or Vox amps. And when I was a teenager, I asked somebody after my homemade attempts were that good at the age of 14, um, what's the best amp in the world? And somebody called it, it was a Mesa Boogie. Carlos Santana played a Mesa Boogie back then. And so, you know, I had no clue at the time. I bought a Mesa Boogie. And this was so expensive. I had to work my whole uh, I, I, weeks. What, what was it that you got? Um, uh, this was an uh, MK2B. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I found out later that it was not the best M for me because I'm more a Marshall guy. Um, but it was kind of a, a step in the process of learning what I actually want. I learned about high gain. You know, the Mesa had, was the first high gain amp, mm -hmm. um, but the, the sound was like more like a saxophone, you know, more mid rangey And I was missing, you know, the oomph, oomph, oomph and, and the, the rock attitude from it. Mm -hmm. And that was a step. Then I com combined the Mesa with a 4x12 and then I started to modify the Mesa. <laughs> and then I bought a Japanese copy of the Mesa from Ivar and modded that one. And then I put um, a logo on it, which was Bloogie, in the same like Boogie. Mm -hmm. I made it, <laughs> you stick a little L yeah. in there. And that's my nickname by now. Oh. Every, in Germany, everybody uh, calls me Bloogie. Oh, like, that's great. <laughs> that's, you know, so this is, this is uh, that story. But, okay, talking about sound concepts, I think there's one thing I found when I come to the US, a lot of people play E major chords. G major, E major. And in Europe, 
they play more A, like you did in uh, at the end. But it's like they they start with A. A is the first thing on their list, hmm. and um, then I I hear a certain uh, difference in in the high end also. American sounds they can have a little sizzle in the overdrive. You know, if you look back on the history, like Steve Lukather and the sparkle of Fender amps is also remaining in some overdrive tones. Not all of them, but some overdrive tones, to a certain extent. As in European, British voiced amps, they are more about the cello tone. Mm. You know? Yeah, sure. So th their musical idea is like uh, Blackmore. I'm very much influenced by Richie Blackmore. Uh, he probably yeah, had that kind of sound idea. Mm. In, uh, I know background stories that he forced Jim Marshall always to build a Vox amp in a Marshall housing, <laughs> which ended up in a major amp with 200 watts and all that funny things. Um, but most of the stuff that we think Richie was playing Marshalls was actually playing a Vox and a Range Master booster. Oh, his weird custom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, but. Um, That's a whole nother video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, you know, let's talk about European and what 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 we know about tones. That's that's great. Well, th th I mentioned that because that hearkened me to uh, a couple other to uh, amps that I've had and played that just were German. Yeah. And it just instantly took me there. I was like, oh, that really reminds me of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, but yeah, it's yeah. a testament to it because. These amps I'm talking about are humongous, and and yeah. I can't throw it in my pocket. And this you can, yeah, run out with it. Yeah, but I, I find it very interesting to talk about, you know, also this sound cultures, um, because I think we all can learn from others' cultures. And if you look back on German rock history, like Scorpions, uh, and like Michael Schenker, I think he was an influential player. Or Uli, Uli John Roth, mm -hmm. you know, too. Like he was the first step into the neoclassical thing that I know of. Yeah, and I would agree. and he had maybe his uh, the, the the next step of of this thing was Ingvi and a lot of American players, but he was kind of at at the forefront, and then in Germany a few others, but the Americans took over and did it even better. But I think this kind of ping pong going on in music and tones is so great. I, I love it. You know, it's like I grew up with American music, like um, maybe Toto or even Gino Vanelli. Nobody else in Germany knew who Gino Vanelli was, but was my secret, uh, you know, LP with some killer guitar playing. And so I could be different because I had some secret weapons. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, what did I do here? Uh, so, okay, more super chunk in this uh, modern. That's. Yeah. Um, and there's uh, ah, and there is a, a, a metal gate, so for a hard gate. So if you go and it's quiet. Look at that. That sounds really natural too. Come yeah, that's that's a nice sounding gate. Okay. I like. So you see, there's a, a a range of tones you can get, and of course you can have the custom controls here and the tone controls there. But I found, you know, at the beginning when you get one of those amps, you you might and and tweak and search a little bit. But after a while, you find your tones, and then it's more about the playing again. And this is the concept of the amp one. Or I use this on my pedal board with a, a loop switcher and bring in. My beloved pedals that I collected over the years, a compressor and a mm -hmm. small stone phaser and and combine this with, with the M1. But I also gig with this just like it is, without anything else. I put it in the gig bag and that's it. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd feel comfortable with that for yeah. sure. And it's universal power. So, I mean, it's made for the uh, gigging guy. You know, you fly to another country. If you have a beautiful tube, and maybe you have 110 and in Europe, they don't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, or the vice versa, you know. And you know what keeps, I, I have to keep resetting my mind. I look at it and in my head, it keeps wanting to think, oh, this is like a amp in a box pedal 
that I would take to a gig and plug into the back line. And I have to keep reminding myself, no, this is the whole thing. Yeah. It's a whole, and I mean, there's a cabinet out also. On also, this. So, yeah, to so power if you, direct. For if you don't want to have a cabinet. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, can you tell me, I, I haven't heard that, yeah. is that IR based? Is it analog? This filtering? is still analog, analog, but the Mercury edition, which is the one that we're hearing right now, I, I've done after I've done my blue box. The blue box is IR based. Okay. The blue box is a speaker emulator with only 16 cabinets, mm -hmm. but I made this for the live guy as well. So there's not too many choices. This is what you get, you know, dial it in and you're happy or buy another product. And um, when I finished the blue box, I've done the Mercury and then I've designed this out to sound like one of those. You know, and so if you were going to use the blue box, you'd yeah. go out of where into the blue box? Speaker out, because we learned that the speaker and the power amp is one of the most uh, um, important parts of the amplifier. So use it on the speaker out to get the full signal into the blue box into the board. And you don't have to have an actual speaker, speaker cabinet connect. connected. You don't need whatsoever. to. You can. Yeah, or you, you you can use it without it. So, so I can plug in headphones yeah. into that yeah. with no speaker yeah. out. Nothing's going to catch yeah. fire. No or problem. Explode. Okay, let's magically switch from the Mercury to the Iridium. Okay, the Iridium yeah. is not a V2 or V3 no. of this. It's a... Standalone is, is, is another amp that uh, is besides the Mercury. Mercury is classic rock traditional up to a certain amount of gain as we heard enough gain but the characteristic is all always more classic okay so and the iridium is like metal and it's also flexible into so there's kind of a range where it overlaps a bit but they have it starts with the power amp the power amp is already different the dampening is different so kind of the platform where all the preamps work on is different gotcha gotcha okay so, so that's a clean channel and it's nice and sparkly This one get gainy like the other, or is this more? Uh, yeah, but uh, differently. This one. So it just gets kind of a little bit of extra bite and bite. And yeah, and but but it's it's not as blooming bluesy. Yeah, you know. I get that. I mean, if I use the boost, just try it. It's not going to the play the right place. Yeah, for, for a blues player, yes. you know. Right. So I would use this, you know. I designed it with metal players in my head, and I thought, you know, what can I do good for a metal player? Is a nice clean tone, even with high output pickups. Um, and so a little bit more headroom and more sparkle to to clean up um, mid rangey pickups. Okay. Yeah. So this is what this is actually doing. When I reduce the gain, so imagine a high output pickup. Clean, clean, cool. clean. So, yeah. okay, here is the next channel, and um, which is vintage. Okay, let's hear that. Sounds nice. Can you can we yeah. unreverb that one? I kept looking for you to do the knob. And I hear uh, there's a gate in yeah. this one also. Okay. I used the reverb in conjunction with the gate. When this gate is switched, there's reposition for the gate. Off, soft and metal. And when it's on metal, what I was doing right now, uh, when I switch to no reverb, the, mate, uh, the gate goes automatically to metal. Ah. So we have 
a tight sound. It went metal so quickly, and we have two more channels after that. Yeah, yeah, this is only the vintage channel. That was rad. Okay, let's check out the classic channel. So that uh, we were on vintage. Does that have a voicing knob no. on the side? Okay. Both amps don't have a, because you know my concept was I need one amp that is kind of the center of the universe, and I can go from there because if I use the tone control, the three band tone control and max that for that channel, then I can match all the other channels toward that sound. Gotcha. That was my concept. Gotcha. So this is the classic channel. Try this and the tone first on counterclockwise. <laughs> She's got enormous. Yeah. Jeez. By the way, this is a German sound. I call I call this the German metal because that's my inspiration of Rammstein. Oh, uh, this, sure. You know, so, so we started kind of the 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 classic channel on, which is more classic voiced like we know you know with the woody kind of thing in the middle but this is like Rammstein <coughs> you know yeah I, I'm i sorry I'm stunned now I just have a glassy <laughs> look on my face like what just, where did I just go holy yeah. cow that's yeah. monstrous you, you feel the energy it's unbelievable yeah, yeah that's know? crazy it's, it's, I'm, I'm a little scared to go to the next level what's no it's 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 it, it goes in another direction but okay let's <laughs> So that the mids kind of jumped out yeah. those upper mids. Yeah. I would suspect that for someone that's really down tuning, yeah. that is the perfect thing sure. to make their guitar sure, jump sure. out. I mean, you know, that's why I have the I use the three different channels to get different characters because some people have drop A or whatever, you know, B flat C whatever. And you know, some need more woody frequencies, others need, you know, you know, more metal frequencies. And and also the I gotta try something here. Yeah, sure. Ah, go to base. <laughs> yes. Let's let's try all the. Pa I've never heard. I've never done this in in a video. Let's try this and and see how 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 it works for modern, classic, and vintage. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? So this is clean, by the way. I'm gonna go to the B since we're <laughs> yeah we're doing this anyway. Go all the way down. Awesome. Yeah. So now you see how low can you go and high gain, no problem. Yeah. You know.
Because that is the Amp One in all of its glory. I am super impressed. I bought one. I mean, this is <laughs> so insanely light. It's actually ridiculous. Uh, I know it's gonna come in handy. And it's really fun to play through and sounds awesome. So there you go, dudes. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.